Hi everyone, welcome back to the Vision Refocus channel. Our goal here is to provide a resource for people to learn more about different conditions of the eye, as well as to provide actionable steps for keeping your eyes healthy. I'm Dr. Kevin Cornwell, and today I wanted to go over a common eye condition that we always hear about, and that is glaucoma. We'll review what it is, how it occurs, and whether or not there is anything you can do to avoid getting this sight-threatening condition. Let's jump right in. So in glaucoma, there is irreversible damage to the optic nerve, typically after periods of high eye pressure inside the eye. It's one of the main causes of blindness worldwide and affects about 80 million people. There are various types of glaucoma, but the two most common are primary open angle glaucoma and normal tension glaucoma. These make up about 95% of all glaucoma cases. Narrow angle and closed angle glaucoma can also occur as well. So primary open angle and narrow angle glaucoma are both almost always associated with higher eye pressures, while normal tension glaucoma is almost always related to a lack of blood flow and oxygen to the eye. Risk factors for developing glaucoma include age, genetics, sleep apnea, diabetes, and most importantly, high eye pressure. Smoking, steroid use, and blood pressure changes can also play a role in developing this disease. Glaucoma also disproportionately affects people of African, Asian, and Hispanic ethnicities. Before we continue, I want to take a moment and explain two different anatomical structures inside the eye, so all of this makes a little bit more sense. One is the optic nerve, and two is the anterior chamber angle. The optic nerve is the main part of the eye affected by glaucoma, and it's basically an extension of our brain that transmits our vision from our eye to our brain. The optic nerve consists of little tiny bundles of cables we call axons that transmit our central and peripheral vision back to our visual cortex for processing. Looking at the optic nerve head on, it appears as an orange yellowish colored donut. And where it enters the eye, we have what we refer to as the physiologic blind spot, 15 degrees temporal to our fixation. We never notice this blind spot because we usually have both eyes open. When the optic nerve is affected by a disease, vision loss can be highly variable, ranging from patients being completely asymptomatic and having 20-20 vision to no light perception and complete blindness. Many conditions can affect the optic nerve, including glaucoma, alcohol and substance abuse, birth defects, and trauma, as well as many neurological conditions such as strokes, multiple sclerosis, or even brain tumors. And as for the anterior chamber angle, this structure sits at the front of the eye and is located where the white part of our eye meets the colored part. This is where fluid inside the eye drains. Our eye pressure is highly dependent on how open or closed this drain structure is, and this is dependent on a variety of factors. So in patients with glaucoma, those little optic nerve cables that we looked at become damaged from higher eye pressures and no longer function properly. A lot of times pressure can build up inside the eye from an age-related narrowing of that interior chamber angle that we looked at. However, this can also occur from things like cataracts, uncontrolled diabetes, or even trauma. So you may be wondering what a normal eye pressure is, and this is a little bit different for everybody, but typically an eye pressure between 8 and 21 is considered normal. Some people may fall above or below this range and that might be totally okay for them. In glaucoma, the eye pressure is only one part of the clinical picture as there are other factors to consider. In addition to high eye pressure, loss of oxygen and blood flow to the eye can also cause a portion of those little optic nerve cables to die off as well. We've already mentioned smoking, sleep apnea, blood pressure changes, and diabetes. Each of these conditions can compromise blood circulation to the eye and increase the risk of developing glaucoma, even in the absence of a higher eye pressure. When glaucoma occurs, the optic nerve develops an eroded, sort of cupped out appearance in the affected section. This clinical finding typically occurs slowly over months and years, but can occur more rapidly over days to weeks in some cases. Depending on which part of the optic nerve that's affected, this will determine whether or not a patient is symptomatic for vision changes from glaucoma. As I mentioned before, sometimes patients are completely asymptomatic and I was the one that told them they had an eye problem, 
Other times, if the part of the optic nerve that's responsible for central vision is affected, then patients will be highly symptomatic for vision changes. And what's crazy about glaucoma is that patients may be completely asymptomatic during the early stages of the disease. Patients can actually lose up to half of their peripheral vision before they have any symptoms from glaucoma. So when patients do start to notice symptoms from glaucoma, they usually experience new shadows or blind spots in their peripheral vision, or even the sensation of staring through a window screen in that affected eye. Unless both eyes are affected, most patients will still be able to perform their daily activities without much of an issue. So when it comes to managing glaucoma, all evidence-based treatment options right now revolve around reducing eye pressure one way or another. This can be achieved through pharmaceutical eye drops, in-office laser procedures, or even more invasive surgical procedures. There's also the off-label use of various nutritional supplements that can be used as well to slow the progression of glaucoma. We'll save that one for another video. Over the past decade or so, a variety of new surgical techniques have been developed to treat glaucoma. These are considered minimally invasive glaucoma surgeries, also known as MIGs. These are a little bit more invasive, but can achieve a greater reduction in eye pressure. And depending on the severity of the glaucoma, one of these may be essential. During a MIGS procedure, a tiny tube or a shunt is surgically placed into the anterior chamber angle, thus further opening the drainage structures and lowering eye pressure. MIGS can also be done simultaneously with other eye surgeries, such as cataract surgery. For patients with large blind spots in their vision, they might also benefit from an evaluation with a low vision specialist. These are typically optometrists who have access to various types of visual aids, such as magnifiers or telescopes, which can help patients better use their remaining vision. And this conversation wouldn't be complete without mentioning marijuana. I know a lot of people think smoking pot is good for their eyes, especially if they have glaucoma. And while it is true that marijuana can temporarily lower eye pressure, it does so for just a few hours at a time. This actually causes rapid fluctuations in eye pressure um, over a 24-hour period, which can increase the risk of developing glaucoma instead of preventing it. Patients will often ask me if there's anything they can do to avoid developing this sight-threatening condition. I often recommend annual eye exams, especially if there is a concern for glaucoma in the family or a history of higher eye pressures. Other controllable risk factors should also be addressed and managed. As we talked about, smoking, sleep apnea, blood pressure changes, diabetes, and obesity, just to name a few. And when I say blood pressure changes, I'm referring to both high and low pressure. All of these can compromise blood flow to the eye. And because during the early stages of glaucoma, most patients won't have any symptoms whatsoever, it's important to have a comprehensive eye exam by your trusted eye care professional. While there is no cure for glaucoma, when caught in the early stages, most patients are able to preserve their vision and quality of life for years and decades to come. So there you have it. I hope this video provided some additional insight into how glaucoma occurs and how it can affect your eyes and vision. If you have any further questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you. Also, if you have any eye-related topics you'd like to see covered in a future video, let me know as well. For more videos on eye health and disease, feel free to check out the other videos on our channel and subscribe. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.